Our anti-penultimate contestant is astrophysicist Tiana Plodanovic from Serbia. We're not doing cosmic ray research or teaching, or obviously ordinary things like eating and sleeping. Uh, Tiana adores karaoke and music in general, but hates, really, really hates people who mistake astronomy and astrology. But that's what you'd expect from a Scorpio. Tiana, as you know from karaoke, you can do a lot in three minutes, so get ready to hit some high notes. I don't know how many of you have had a chance to go somewhere up north to some maybe Scandinavian country or maybe Alaska, but if you do get a chance to do so, what I want you to do is take a moment to look at the sky on a clear, nice night. Because what you just might happen to see is some kind of mysterious looking red and green light that's shimmering on the sky like some celestial curtain. Now that light, that is what we call the polar light or the northern lights here on the northern hemisphere. And the main, shall I say, sponsor of such one magnificent celestial event is actually our sun. Now besides just shining, the sun is also constantly emitting something we call the solar wind. Now, that solar wind is nothing but a bunch of charged particles, and that's mostly your everyday electrons, that stream on the surface of the sun into the open space and, of course, towards the Earth. So you can actually view that solar wind as some sort of a space rain that is constantly falling on Earth, and you can imagine the Earth there as some house here in the UK. Okay, so when those solar wind particles come close to the Earth, some of them get trapped by the Earth's magnetic field, which then channels them towards the poles, towards the north and the south pole, from where then those particles <coughs> rush towards the surface. Now that's similar to a rain falling on a rooftop and then getting collected in the gutter. And then the gutter channels that rain, just like magnetic field, towards that, you know, that vertical part of the gutter that is on the side of the house, and then the rain falls down towards the ground. Okay, so we have those solar wind particles trapped on the poles, rushing towards the surface. But along the way, they start co colliding with atoms uh, in the atmosphere. And because of those collisions, the atoms get excited. Now that means that an electron inside the atom now has more energy than it had before, which is actually not a normal state for it. So it wants to get rid of that energy fast. And it does that by emitting a light, which then is the light we see as the, as the polar light. And that is actually how a neon lamp works, right? You have a tube filled with gas, neon, right? A bunch of charged particles rushing through the tube, colliding with atoms of neon that get excited and emit light. So that's the story of how polar lights are made. Okay, and one more thing. Uh, pay attention to the news. If you ever happen to hear on the news something like there are some explosions happening on the sun, wait for two, three days, and then observe the sky. Because if those explosions are very strong, what might happen is that our should I say magnetic gutter, Earth's magnetic gutter, might get overflown. And then in that case, you may be even able to see northern lights even from here in Jelton. Ah. Wow. <laughs> Again, great demeanor. You've got a nice uh, connection with people. Um, I was actually under the impression that uh, Northern Lights was something a little different. Have you, have you ever heard of Cherenkov radiation? Oh, that's something totally different. Oh, right. Well, yeah. just <laughs> okay. Tell us what that uh, is anyway. Okay. Cherenkov, uh, Cherenkov light. So, those are, uh, that's a very faint light, uh, kind of bluish looking, hard to see with a naked eye, that happens when really fast, fast cosmic rays. So, cosmic rays, that's just like that space rain, same. Charged particles zooming through space hits the top of the a atmosphere and produces a bunch of particles like a shower that happen through the atmosphere. And some of them, because they move very fast, emit like faint bluish light. And that's actually very, very cool for, uh, in astronomy, for gamma rays. That's another weird sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> that we don't need to know about. But it's a, it's a bit different. But Cherenkov light happens everywhere. Right. You know, polar light is just stick to the poles. Thank you. You remedied my ignorance. Thank you. <laughs>